for this theme, shared and inclusive growth, what does that mean in Africa? I think the simple way to um, explain it is uh, the growth that matters for the poor citizen. Mm. So, you know, so the growth is not just statistical. Uh, the growth mm. in which they can say, I am participating. Mm. I am benefiting from that growth. And that means, how do you uh, make economies structurally transformed to bring in many more people? So people are not living on the fringes mm. of some enclave economy. Mm. Um, in, in some of the economies, we actually see a dual tracking mm. where you've got this disparity and so inequality is really mm. uh, pernicious. Um, and, and so bringing this together in a way where the opportunity to, to participate mm. is presented a larger number of people mm. uh, is the concept of broad-based growth, uh, uh, shared growth, inclusive right. growth. Right. And it means that you need to be looking at the quality of the growth. Let's talk about how that happens because before the credit crisis, some people would tell you in a country like South Africa when there was good growth mm. around 5%, the rich got four times richer and the poor saw their poverty situation diminish as opposed to becoming wealthier. So how do we fix that? Because investments through capital inflows, through FDI, seems to benefit shareholders and not the ordinary person. We need to be looking at um, the sectors that hold the potential and the promise. Uh, in a number of the countries uh, on the continent, in fact, averagely, what we see is that um, some 70 to 80 percent of employment is held within the agriculture sector. Mm -hmm. But you see the huge disconnect of that sector from every other productivity. And so how do you integrate that sector and um, instigate the productivity mm -hmm. of that sector? If you're, if you're, if you're m the mass audience that you want to target mm -hmm. to connect to growth are already in a sector, mm. except that they are low productivity. Well, how would you respond to somebody who said, okay, 70% of Africa's people are employed in one way or another along the agricultural value chain. The problem is that too many of them are subsistence and small farmers. We don't have farming estates. We don't have large-scale commercial farming because it's a high-risk sector. FDI is not going to come into that. Well, we're seeing um, uh, in very nascent stages of a massive interest uh, for large-scale commercial agriculture in, in Africa. And you cannot substitute smallholder farmers with that. You have to be, it has to be a complementary strategy. You've got to find a way to integrate the uh, support that uh, large and commercial agriculture can provide uh, to, to smallholder mm -hmm. farmers. And, 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 and part of it is to look at the way to modernize the activities of the smallholder farmers. Mm. And so investment uh, in the kind of research and in the kind of new technologies that would support mm. their own acceleration of growth and therefore their integration mm. to the markets, that's going to be key. Mm. But you know, tackling the, the matters of access to land, access to finance, mm. uh, looking at the importance of irrigation, mm inputs and mm -hmm. seeds, uh, the, the whole adop adoption of technologies, right. new, new varieties, opportunities arrive. Mm -hmm. but, but what to do is, uh, Loretta, I, Loretto, yeah. I always say that every government uh, has an interplay of policies, institutions, and investment. Right. And when you get this aligned properly mm -hmm. and you do uh, this in a collaborative process with the private sector yeah. and the civil society, we actually see good solutions. Let's move beyond the rural areas and into more urban social problems. Mm. Youth unemployment, it's a huge issue uh, across the African continent. Young people coming out of high school, coming mm. out of university, not being able to be absorbed into the mainstream. What's being proposed here? What's being proposed is that, you know, we, we need to look at it from a stock and a flow uh, perspective. You, you know, I was former Minister of Education in my country, and, and so the stock problem was that this had been happening 
over many years, in some cases over two decades, and nobody really paid attention. Mm -hmm. And so you've got this massive stock of people held in informal sector or you know, basically eking out a living, supporting family-owned businesses, low productivity. Mm -hmm. And then, aside from the stock, then you've got the flow. The system that produced these other people continues mm -hmm. to produce. So you, you, can, you, you have to have a multiplicity. Mm -hmm. Get the education system right immediately so that it doesn't continue to produce people who will just simply join the queue. Mm -hmm. And then get the ones that, are, that have joined this massive army of unemployed, mm -hmm. um, find interventions working together with private sector mm -hmm. that can absorb them. Mm -hmm. You can also develop some social safety net approach, mm -hmm. but you must look at them as a huge army that you have to adapt their skills to new possibilities. I mean, I think a lot of investors are very concerned that the two largest economies in Africa have this one basic problem. Poor skills mm. because of a bad education system and low productivity. Certainly in South Africa, that's mm. a huge issue for investors and it's one of the impediments mm. to investment. True. Whilst we're fixing an education system, which is a long-term project, mm. what steps can be taken day to day? Part of what I've seen is Engaging the private sector in looking at the cost to training to adapt. Um, when, I, w w when I was um, handling that sector, part of what we looked at was to identifying what the skills gaps were in adaptation. And so we were looking at sectors that were beginning to emerge um, in, in ICT, in services uh, to the petroleum sector, the mining sector, looking at the fashion industry, and sort of saying, how do you make some of these sectors really cool, uh, in the word of the, mm -hmm. of the young who's left school? Mm -hmm. And how do you take them through this short-term program that is intense mm -hmm. and can simply adapt mm -hmm. their skills? And you know what? I involve the private sector mm -hmm. by, by sort of saying, call these kinds of programs innovation enterprise institutions mm -hmm. and take a graduate of a humanitarian study that's been without a job and doesn't really have any skills for mm -hmm. anything and take them through that program mm -hmm. they come out being people ready to support the yeah. services industries yeah. in with new orientations right. but it's going to take the government and the private sector right. in the it, you know, constructively sitting across right. the table and solving. And a final question. Obviously, you're now wearing your World Bank hat as head of Africa for the World Bank. Collaboration with the African Development Bank, where do the two bodies come to the fore? Oh, very much so. We, you know, I mean, look at um, regional integration. We will not do regional integration without the Africa Development Bank. We focus, you know, our, our, our interventions in, say, addressing the energy deficit on the continent, a continent where only about 30% mm -hmm. of people have access. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that's, that's poor. En energy poverty is terrible. Mm -hmm. And so using the power pool approaches, as, you know, each sub-region has a power pool. Mm -hmm. We work with the Africa Development Bank. In transportation, uh, trade corridors, we have mm -hmm. Uh, uh, co-finance co programs with the Africa Development Bank. Even in human development, health and education, there are programs that we, we do together. So these are, these are just must-have partners for us at the World Bank. Uh, and, and in the partnership uh, part of our instrument for our new strategy, the Africa Development Bank is a key actor in partnership. And then finally, in knowledge. Uh, we currently are working at a, an analytical work in the matter of youth unemployment, and we're going to invest jointly in looking at it. Right now, there is a study on information and communication technology and the economics of it, mm. the transformation that it has, mm. it, 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 has, it has modeled, and how we can even integrate it more into all the other sectors mm. of activities in Africa. We're doing it jointly, so they are really great partners of us.